Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I'm going to demonstrate the installation of an M12 electrical connector to the end of an M12 cable with flying leads. No matter who makes the cable, M12 wiring colors are pretty consistent where you have a white, a brown, a blue, and a black, and they pretty much always go to the same terminals inside of these connectors. One of the complaints we get sometimes is that the numbers are so small. Well, Graco doesn't actually make these connectors and that's just part of electrical wiring is that you have some really small numbers to identify the terminals inside these connectors. So let's take a look inside and I'll try to show you a couple of tips along the way to make this a little bit easier for you. The three connectors that we're looking at today are part number 124594, 124595, and 124301. The gender of an electrical connector is determined by the terminals, not by the housing. Now on M12, it's a little easier to stay with it because there's threading. Here you can see we have male thread and then the terminals are male. So we know that's a male connector. On the other side here, the threads inside, so it's female thread. The terminals are female, so we know that this is a female connector. Keep that in mind when you're looking at electrical connectors that the terminals are what determine the gender. But again, on M12, it's pretty easy to keep that straight. I'm going to set aside the 124595 for a little bit because it's actually the one we sell for some bigger wires. So we'll get back to that. For now, we're going to just look at how to wire up the M12 cables that we offer for these various connectors. And it doesn't really matter what brand or color your M12 cable is as far as the insulation, you are gonna have these four wires that are consistently the same color. So like I was showing you in the introduction, we just need to know where to put these four wires. And the best manual to use as a resource, at least from Graco, is 332-305, which is the manual for the G3 Max. As I'm making this video in the fall of 2020, page 20 is actually where you find the pin assignments for the different colors. And in there it shows you that brown goes to number one, white goes to two, blue goes to three, and then black goes to four. And then this wire is female, so we're going to put a male connector on the other end. The connectors actually thread apart in a couple of different places. This is really just an inverted nut here that is to compress that cable gland. So you don't need to take that off. You actually want to leave it a little bit loose so you can push your wire through it a little bit, but you're going to actually unthread here from closer to the base and this barrel piece can just be set aside for the moment. Now we need to find pins one, two, three, and four, which is fun because like I mentioned in the intro, these numbers are really tiny. But one thing you can see here is that there is a key. The way the key is, is that one and two are next to the key, and then three and four are across from the key. Keep that in mind for pins three and four, because we're going to come back to that later in the video. But for the moment, let's flip it around now. And so we know the key is on top. So as long as we don't rotate it, now we know that up here are pins one and two. And we don't necessarily know which one is which, because if you do both genders at different times, it can be hard to keep track of that. But here you can see the one in the sheen of my light. So then over here, now when we rotate it, we can see there is a two. And then coming back over here, we have a three. And then down here is the four. So now that we know which one is number four, when we have good lighting, let's go ahead and label that. I like to use a black marker. Let's get our marker down inside here. And now I've made a nice black mark on that one. Alternatively, I have a white paint pen, so I'm gonna find number two which I'm gonna start over again with finding that key. So there's my key. So then number two is up here. And now that's gonna be a lot easier to see in the low light than even my black mark on the metal terminal. So with everything being black, it's kind of nice to have it set up that way. Now that we've done that little bit of prep work to save ourselves a headache later, we are ready to go ahead and slide the wires through the cable gland. And it's better to do this before the insulation is removed because you don't want to mess up those wire leads that you're going to create later. On this other one here, I've already installed these wires. I didn't actually strip them yet. I just wanted to see what my depth was. So now when I slide this 
barrel up over the wires, the cable gland isn't going to work because we don't have the main jacket of the cable inside the gland. So this is going to be too long. We're going to have to cut off about half of this and leave about three quarters of an inch to an inch exposed. And then we're going to be stripping off about a quarter inch of the final part. Now I have my cable gland and the barrel of this connector slid over the wire. I have all the individual wires cut to length and stripped. And the other thing I did was open up all of these screws on the terminals because when you get a new connector, the terminals are usually closed off or the screws are tightened in and we don't want that. So let's start with our white, put that in there, get my little screwdriver. And since white is number two, Blue is going to be number three. Brown goes on the other side of the white because that's number one. Gets a little bit harder to hold with each wire that goes in there. Number four over here is black, which we can still see the that black mark is still in there just to verify. But chances are if you're doing the white mark, you're not going to do the black. So that's just something I have. All right. Now that all the wires are contained, I'm going to just give this a little more of a snug to make sure that I didn't get lazy here because I was fighting the wires there. And I'm going to give it a quick look now and make sure that none of the conductors are hanging out and touching another wire. And I don't see any. So that passes my little visual inspection. Now we can slide this guy down. Thread it on. And we can see that we don't see any exposed wires anymore, so now we can tighten our nut on our gland. And I would suggest that you get that as tight as you can without cracking this housing. And now we have a completed M12 cable where we have our female end here to go on to our sensor and our male end here to go on to our G3 pump. This can also now serve as an extension cable because something you can see here is that these parts will thread to each other. So you could have two of these cables that you interconnect if you needed an M12 connector to be extended out somewhere further away. Let's take a look at the female connector now and see what the differences are there. The main thing is that it's going to be a mirror image inside. So now when we look at one, two, three, and four, it's going to be going counterclockwise instead. Here's our keyway. So remember the male had the key, so now the female has the keyway up here. And let's see, there's number two. So that means number one is here. We got number three, and we got number four across from number two. So let's just see if I can see my four. Yep, there's my four. So I'm going to get my black marker again anyway, and make my black mark in there. Like I say, not everybody carries a paint pen, but black magic markers are pretty common. But since I have a paint pen, I'm gonna mark number two for being white. And again, I wouldn't necessarily bother doing both. I'm just showing you both options in the video. So now here I have cable one, two, four, 300. This has then the male end. I'm gonna just do this real fast because it's gonna be the same process where we're gonna just push this through the gland. And I don't like having my wires stripped, but it's going to get stripped some more anyway because it's a little bit too long right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and you guys can watch it in high speed. And there we go. Our female connector has the white on number two. And then there's from number one counterclockwise, it goes brown, white, blue, black. So it's the mirror image of the male one because that's how they're going to need to be when you connect them is you want to make sure those colors are going to line up. So this looks funny because the terminals shift a little bit from the actual pins on the other side, but it is a mirror image. And now to complete this one, we can just slide this guy down and snug this up. Now that's tight. We can tighten up our compression nut here. And now this guy's not going anywhere. One thing that I actually wanted to show over here on this one, and the reason I left it exposed was I cut this guy a little bit short. So my leads were only about a half an inch long. And you can still get it in there. There's just not a lot of room to work with. Once it's complete, it's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. You can still put this all back together and it's going to be just as functional as anything else. You 
tighten everything up. It's just for your own sake. If you cut those wires too short, it makes it really difficult to maneuver them into the holes. So stick closer to an inch long instead of the half inch that I cut there. And then strip about 3 16 to a quarter of an inch of the insulation off each lead. So now that leaves us with just the connector 124595 to discuss. What the heck is this thing for? It actually has a terminal for the fifth wire and you can see there's the pin there for the fifth one. But we never actually use that in any applications that I know of because Usually we only use three wires. We don't need the fifth. So that's not why we carry this one. The reason we carry it is because it has a different kind of a gland in here. The rubber piece inside is something that you can actually pop out to different sizes. So you can see here it's already scored inside to have different parts of it removed. So we have a few of the legacy Trabon switches that have a thicker wire. And you'll even see on some of them when they're suggested with the G3, they also suggest this connector. And that's because you can pop this out and make it a little bit of a bigger opening so that you're not trying to force a really thick wire through the 124594, which has a limit to how big it can be. It, it can still be bigger than these M12 cables, but the 124595 gets even bigger still. Everything I was saying earlier about following all the wire color codes is important whenever you're doing a wiring harness for a PNP or NPN transistor based switch or sensor because those need all three wires to be in the right places. But if you're just doing some kind of a two wire setup for a dry contact switch, this happens to be a cable for a DT two pin connector. So let's just pretend that this is gonna be going to a pressure switch that uses a two pin connector to mate to it. When you hook that switch up to the G3 Max, we're only gonna have two wires to work with. And so this is where now understanding the significance of the keyway is that the keyway is in between one and two and then three and four are opposite it. So now as we flip this one around, we have our three and four on the bottom here. Doesn't matter which one's three and which one's four because with the dry contact switch, all we're doing is making and breaking the circuit across these two wires. So now we could install these wires into pins three and four. And again, it doesn't matter in this case which one brown goes to and which one blue goes to. Once they're in pins three and four and you hook this up to the G3 Max, it's gonna see the signal because it's not polarity sensitive. If you have some odd pressure switch that is polarity sensitive, then that's a different story, but it's pretty rare to have a dry contact switch that's polarity sensitive, at least in the applications that we do. So once you know which pins are three and four, and again, it doesn't matter which one's which, just put your two wires in that, and that's gonna take care of your dry contact switch. That's also true of the low level switch on a G3 standard, where it uses an M12 connector on most units. And there again, if you hook up one of our wires to it, like the 124300 wire, blue and black are your three and four respectively, but it doesn't matter which one blue goes to and which one black goes to. When you hook that into a controller like the GLC 2200 or into your PLC, normally it's not gonna care what polarity the wires are. You're just making and breaking that circuit across pins three and four. I hope you found this video helpful and informational. If you have any questions about wiring, about our pumps, about our metering devices, or any other Graco product, please feel free to contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.